Hey, hello, welcome to the next video. Okay, and as you can see, we're moving on to pie charts now. Okay, this falls under the numeracy part of the course. Okay, but it is something we should have seen before. We did it at National 4, and you should have seen it earlier as well in S2. Actually, actually in S1, you'll have seen it as well. So, hopefully, this is a quite a lot of revision. And if you've forgotten it, it comes back to you fairly quickly. Okay, so it does mean I'm going to have to draw, try and draw some nice circles. Forgive me when they come out terrible. So, yep, forgive me. We've got a circle here. I don't know why I drew it so small. Pie chart just means, you know, we'd have this split up into different sections. Okay, and we'd say... If this was, if this pie chart represented a class, we and we'd asked what their favourite colour was, okay? The small portion, their favourite colour was red, the other portion blue, and the other green. And so we could look at that straight away and say, okay, most people in the cl class had a favourite colour as green, fewer had red, and sort of a middle amount had blue, okay? But we can get some actual really good specific data and information from this but obviously we need a bit more detail on the pie chart and a bit of information about who it represents or what the pie chart represents okay so let's have a look at an example question then so let's uh you know that's just reminding you what a pie chart is but i doubt you've forgotten so let's say Bob has um, £240 spare each month and he spends it on Takeaways, cinema, and I can't think of anything else you'd spend your money on. It says a lot about me. Uh, Bob has £240 spare each month, and he spends it on takeaways, cinema, and, let's say, gigs. Okay. How much... Does he spend on the cinema? Okay, so we've got a bit of context here to the question as well, which is normally what we get in these type of things in the tests, okay? We'll look at some after just to practice doing it, but have a bit less context and it's just number-wise, okay? And so we'd get a pie chart then with a bit more detail on it this time, okay? We'd get one that look like this, okay? And we'll have uh, takeaway, I'm just going to put TA. We'd have cinema, I'm just gonna put C, and gigs, I'll put G, okay? Now, as it is, we can't do a lot with that, okay? There's not enough detail on it, okay? But we know that the total pie chart, we know how much that represents, okay? So we know the total pie chart represents £240, okay? Because that's how much he's spending on these three things, okay? So the total equals £240, okay? And what this allows us to do, basically, is this is split up into fractions, isn't it? So if we knew what fraction of the pie chart was takeaway, well, we just have to work out what fraction of the total money that is. If we knew what fraction of a pie chart was cinema, well, we just have to work out what fraction, the same fraction of the money, okay? And the way we can work out what fraction each of these represents is they'll normally, uh, they will in this case, have the angle marked on them, okay? And so what we're going to say is that each of these angles here is 120 degrees, Okay, so let's look at the cinema then. Okay, 
Okay. Cinema. So we need to work out what fraction of the pie is represented by cinema and then work out that fraction of the money. Okay? So we know well, we know the top bit of a fraction. We've got 120 of the degrees. Okay? So we've got 120 out of something. Even if these weren't labelled, okay, we'd know what the total amount of degrees was because we know how many degrees are in a circle, okay? There's 360 degrees in a circle. So the cinema, that is 120 out of the 360, okay? Can you see that? The total circle would be 360 degrees and the cinema part of a pie is 120 out of 360, okay? So we know what fraction of the pie is spent on going to the cinema, 120 over 360. So then we have to work out this fraction of the money, okay? And that's fairly easy. We definitely use our calculators for it, okay? A couple of things we could do, we could simplify this down first if we wanted to, okay? Or we could just go straight from here. I'm probably just going to say we go straight from here. So there's one less step. We don't need to worry about simplifying it, okay? That's if we're doing it on our calculators. If this was non-calculator, it would be a much easier here to simplify it first, okay? So what we'll actually do is look at both ways, okay? We'll do it once simplifying it and once not. So it does, however, mean we have to remember how you work out a fraction of an amount but we should definitely be able to do that. Okay, so we'll do it this way. We'll do it uh, without simplifying it. And over here, we'll do it with simplifying it. Okay, so remember, way fractions work is, well, this is saying it's been split up into 360 pieces and I've got 120 of them. So what I do then is I do 240 pound I divide that by my bottom number, okay? So divide it by 360 to find out how big each piece is. So 240 divided by 360 equals 0 0.67 for rounding, okay? And then I times it by how many pieces I have. So each piece is 0 0.67 when I times that by 120, okay? So what I'm doing here is dividing by the bottom and then timesing by the top, okay? And if I do that, I times them together and I get 80 pound, okay? So a Bob is spending 80 pound on going to a cinema. I could only do that because of my calculator, okay? If this was in the non-calculator paper and you to do it in your head, definitely simplify it first, okay? Now, can we remember how you simplify fractions, okay? So we've got 120 over 360. The way we simplify these is we're looking for anything that the top and the bottom have in common that I can divide them by, okay? Well, we could straight away go Oh, well, I can divide both of these by 10, can't I? So that's going to be 12 over 36, okay? And then these two numbers, I can divide both of these then by 12, okay? So that's going to give me 1 over 3. So we know then that this portion of the pie, 120 out of 360 degrees, well, that's one third of the pie. So let's work out one third of 240. Same as before, okay? We divide by the bottom of the fraction times by the top. So if we divide by the bottom, 240 divided by three, well, that's like 24 divided by three, it was eight, and stick a zero on the end, it's going to be 80 pound. And we don't need to bother times it by the top because let's just times it by one. Okay, so both of these have given us the same answer, okay? Bob is spending £80 a month on going to the cinema, okay? Because that was one third of the pie. So that's how we can use pie charts to get a bit more details out, okay? We do need, however, 
to be fairly comfortable with fractions. So let's look at one more. Okay, I'm just going to pause the video while I write out another question. Okay, so I've got a question here. I have not really thought ahead, and the number I've picked means we'll have to do this on our calculators, okay? It wouldn't be a non-calculator question, but that's okay, because it's still the same steps we're practicing, and you could well get something like this in the calculator paper. So, there are 200 people in a school. How many of them are in S6, okay? So, on our pi, we've got S1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They all look... They're fairly similar in size, okay? Bit unusual for a school, okay? So it's not the most realistic example, okay? But we don't care how big these pieces of pi are, okay? We only care about the S6s, which is the one labelled, and they are 72, okay? So first, though, let's just make sure we're really clear what the total pi represents. So the total pi represents 200 people, okay? And so then the S6s, that's only a fraction of that. So again, remember, it's the full pi, which is 360 degrees. So that's always going to be the bottom of our fraction. And then the S6s, well, they're 72 out of that 360. So 72 over 360. Okay. And so we'll work it out the same way we did the last one. Divide by the bottom number times by the top. Okay, so that means we've got 200 divided by 360. Okay, I'm going to write the answer to each stage here. You wouldn't really have to, okay? So we've got 200 divided by 360, which equals 0 0.56. And then we're going to do the 0 0.56 times by 72 because that's what our top of the fraction is, okay? Times by 72 gives us 40 people, okay? So this is a weird school that has 40 people in S6 when it's such a small school, but I don't know, maybe everyone loves staying on, okay? So we've divided by the bottom, which was the whole pie, 360, then we've times by the top to get how many people, okay? And that's all we need to be able to do with pie charts, okay? So as long as we can identify what number degrees our section is, we can work out how much that represents, okay? You may get some questions where every other one of these is labelled a number of degrees and yours isn't, okay? And so you'd be able to work that out because you know we all have to add up to 360, so what must the missing one be to add up to 360, okay, and so forth like that. Okay, again, if you've got any questions, any problems, get in touch. We can talk about it over Google Meet, do as many other examples as you want. But hopefully that was understandable and jogged your memory about pie charts. So thank you for watching. Goodbye.